Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. And for today's viewing pleasure, I am very proud to present one of the finest scouting games in recent memory, and I say that even knowing that Aurorix 78 exists. And yes, this is Prokhorovka, and yes, Prokhorovka is an excellent passive scouting map, but Mr. VHS here ain't going to be doing none of that, because he's doing his scouting in the KV-5. Yes, really. You don't actually have to be in a light tank to scout for your team. You just have to be the one closest to the enemy. The KV-5 is a heavy tank. <laughs> can't believe I'm saying this with a straight face. <laughs> I mean, it is a heavy tank. It's an extremely heavy tank. This thing weighs more than 100 tonnes. Um, and it's got a lot of frontal armour. It's also improbably fast for something with that much armour and that much weight, but hey, you know, Russia. So, yeah. Don't know if you noticed there at the start in chat, Mr VHS asked, does somebody want to be my engine? He's obviously going for the hill. Um, it's not uncommon for people to give KV-5s a push. Although, you do need a tank with some serious grunt in the engine to push a KV-5. Often all you'll actually succeed in doing is slowing yourself down to the KV-5 speed. As you can see though, it can pick up a... Well, you know, in chat, I want to ram someone. <laughs> this is why he's going for the hill. He wants to get a good run-up at something on the other side of the hill, so he can crush it beneath his hundred and possibly five tons of Russian steel. Uh, KV-5s are ferocious ramming machines. All of that weight and armour and the amount of speed they can actually pick up. You do not want to be in front of one of these things when it's on top of the hill looking down at you. Because that's the dream of every KV-5 player. They want to be perched on top of the hill, gunning the engine with a whole bunch of victims down below them. I think Mr. VHS has just realised that he's all on his own over here. He might not have noticed the uh, the actual scout on the team, the GSOR, saying go middle, not the hill. Because everybody's gone middle. And he's the only one going for the hill. Well, he's here now. <laughs> May as well. Oh, enemy team have already suffered their first casualty. The T25-2 just drowned himself. That's one less victim for Mr. VHS, I suppose. He is, of course, going to be awfully exposed up here with everybody in the middle. I mean, it's really difficult to hide a KV-5. The Yang Panzer IV on the team is letting him know, I've got your back. And the safety and comfort of the B-line, yeah, I'm sure he'll be very relieved to know that a flat Panzer is backing him up. <laughs> Uh, the enemy, of course, already know he's up here. Although whether they're paying attention or not remains to be seen. He's not having much luck with his 107mm gun, is he? It, it is a good gun. It's, um, it's not bad at all. Although, well, the initial performance of it in this match would indicate otherwise. He hasn't, he hasn't hit a single thing yet. Trust me, it is a decent gun. He's just not having a huge amount of luck with it just yet. Right. There's the first victim. Oh, and he's starting to take flank and fire, which means he cannot hang around up here. So he's going to go for it. Now, he doesn't have much of a height advantage here to ram that KV-85 with, but he's going to... Oh, no, don't go towards the KV-5. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, it was awfully sporting of the KV-85 to increase their relative collision speeds by moving towards the onrushing KV-5. Can't count on everybody to be quite so accommodating. He is continuing to take flanking fire, but well, you know, this is a tough tank. Enemy Tiger P in the middle has scored one hit. Now, where did... Oh, hang on a second. Yeah, you don't want to be hanging around up here. You need to get off the hill. Because there's victims waiting to be... Oh, dear. <laughs> you might want to start backing up. Nah, too late. <laughs> Appropriately enough, he's got the Arnold Schwarzenegger tank commander. To be or not to be. Ramming speed, not to be. <laughs> I think that was one of his quotes from the last action hero. Uh, except minus the ramming speed. Yeah, at the beginning of the movie they did a, a mock trailer for Arnie's version of Hamlet. Uh, where he basically just machine gunned everybody. <laughs> because Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, this tank's still got it. 
Oh, this is turning into a bit of a rout, isn't it? The team have only lost one tank and they've scored six casualties. And, uh, well, that situation isn't going to get any better for them with a KV-5 roaming up their backside. Heavy tank number six there, the Japanese Tiger. Oh, are you stuck? Do you want some help getting off that in back? No, you're dead. Never mind. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, look, KV-1S on two hit points. Did you see him? There he is. <laughs> Somebody on Mr. VHS's team is going to be pissed off about that. Bloody typical. Low damage roll, penetrating hit, leaves him on two hit points. Come on, my son. Yes. <laughs> oh, total recall quote there from Arnie. See you at the party, Richter. Richter in Total Recall, of course, played by Ronnie Cox, who also played Dick Jones, the villain, in Robocop. So Mr. VHS is... Uh, wow, the team have still... Oh no, I spoke too soon. They have now just suffered their seven casualty and have inflicted nine upon the enemy team. And Mr. VHS has got 6,000 combined damage done and blocked with nearly a thousand spot damage. It's not that he hasn't been spotting targets, it's just that he's really been the one smashing them. He's now over a thousand spawn damage. See, this is known as scouting with your face. It's a uniquely Russian tactic. <laughs> Although the, uh, the American Doom Turtle, the T-95, has been known to be fairly successful at it too. He's not stopping for anything now. There's not an awful lot of them left and they're all in this corner of the map, with the exception of the one... no two enemies getting swarmed in the middle. KV-5's armour getting the job done here. I sense some more spot and damage coming. Right, the middle's been cleared, there are just four enemies left and they're all hiding in this corner of the map. He took a hit there from the AMX AC-48. It was spotted and there's a one-shot kill. I'm surprised he didn't go for him next, but um, you know, it's the enemy tank remaining with the most dangerous... Ah, uh, you know what, I don't think it really matters at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a slaughter. One left. We know exactly where he is. He just took a hit. There you are. And boom, headshot. Game over. So how do you think he did? He did pretty well. <laughs> Let's just take a quick look at the post-battle results screen. So, yeah, Ace Tanker. Not terribly surprising. There's the Spartan medal. Survivor hit when at 10% hit points or less. You can thank the last enemy tank alive, the M4257, for that. When Mr. VHS was on 99 hit points, he took a shot at him rather than something that he can actually penetrate and damage, uh, earning him the Spartan medal in the dying seconds of the match. There's the cool-headed medal. To get that, you have to survive 10 non-penetrating or ricocheting hits in a row, you know, one after the other, Seems a little improbable, but when you realise that he actually took 46 hits during the course of this battle and didn't die, it's perhaps not surprising. Um, then, of course, and here's the big one, help the team damage at least six enemy vehicles by spotting them. In a KV-5, <laughs> he actually spotted more than six, um, and his team damaged seven vehicles that he'd spotted. He spotted more than that, it's just that he was the only one doing damage to them. Then there's the Confederate Award. To earn this one you have to hit more enemy vehicles than any other player on your team. Has to be at least six, who are then subsequently destroyed by other players on your team. That's the Cheers for the Assist medal. Unsurprisingly, there's the Steel Wall. Wait until you see... I mean, we already know he took 46 hits. Wait until you see how much damage he blocked. Equally unsurprisingly, because generally when you get the Confederate Award, you've been doing a ton of damage, uh, there's the High Calibre Award as well. You ready for the rest of the numbers? 4,819 damage done, and not far short of 2,000 base experience. If he hadn't gone it alone there, he wouldn't have done nearly as well, because he would have been sharing damage with the rest of the team. As it was, he pretty much had all of those enemy tanks on the hill to himself. Also, while we're here looking at the team lists, this is really weird. Look at the bottom six tanks on both teams. Five of the bottom six tanks on both teams did zero damage. And the only two tanks in the bottom six on both teams that did any damage, his team's M6 and the enemy team's AT-15A, both at exactly the same point in the leaderboard and both doing more or less the same amount of damage. And yet both earning 
less experienced than the one tank above them who did zero damage. That's just really weird. But anyway, moving on, this is where the fun begins. 22 shots fired, he did have some really bad luck with the gun at first, 16 hits of which 14 penetrated for basically 5,000 damage. Hits received, 46. Hits that penetrated, 7. <laughs> which means that damage blocked by armour was 7,020, and he got 3,500 spotting damage, which means that his combined damage done, blocked, and assisted was 15,280 in a battle that only lasted seven minutes. <laughs> Mr. VHS in the KV-5. It's still got it. Hope you all enjoyed it. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.